are the hosts of the OK Drama Podcast. We're OK. Um, we are two friends who recap and break down K dramas one episode at a time. We are two friends. Yeah. Hey, Joel. Hi, Caitlin. How's it going? <laughs> Good. Good. Yeah. We are filming this kind of like on a Friday. Yeah. Usually we film or film. Yeah. Record we- these early in the week. Wednesdays usually. Right after I've watched the drama. They're fresh in your mind. Mm-hmm. But I watched this drama on like Monday, so <laughs> we'll see what happens. You'll just remind yourself as you. Yeah. But no, I was day. like flipping shit the whole time not the whole time but like i was just like so excited mm-hmm. watching these episodes i looked at alex and i was like oh my god <laughs> oh my god we'll get into it but he was like did it finally get good because alex isn't really watching either right no he yeah. just but i told him it, it's it's always been good but it just got like really drama y and yeah. exciting honestly so. like in the beginning I wasn't very interested in the work aspect of it. Yeah. And now I'm more interested in the work aspect than the romance. Really? Yeah. Yeah. The romance stuff got a little more intense the last episode. Uh Uh-huh. This last one that we're about to talk about. But I think the work stuff is more interesting and more fun. Not like the nitty-gritty of the works. Yeah. More just just like like the things that are happening. dynamics between everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. I'm enjoying that a lot. Totally. Uh, should we go into it? Sure. All right, so episode seven. We start with Tommy and Morgan holding the... Holding the can. I don't even remember that. <laughs> it's like the can of beer I, when they're in the hotel room. Oh, okay. <laughs> this, this was will they or won't they bo- bone? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know okay. why it's so bone weird. Yeah. Bone? Bone. <laughs> okay. Um, so <laughs> we start with Tommy and Morgan holding the can, and he tells her to avert her eyes. And then they're about to bone. (laughs) She lets go and starts to get up, but he does a mini wrist grab. Not like a full on. Yeah, not a a wrist grab pool. Hug. Roll around, hug, kiss, eyes meet, whatever. Um, But a little one. And he tells her that her wound has healed. (laughs) I don't know if he uses the word wound. I feel like he does. I think it said wound, yeah. (laughs) It wasn't that big of a wound either. It was just like he cut her hand on... Wasn't um, that big of a deal. Yeah. Um, but she thanks him and he tells her that even if she's scared to not run away today, uh, I read that really fucking weird. She thanks him and he tells her that even if she's scared, don't run away today. Mm-hmm. That makes more sense than the way I first read it, huh? Yeah. I read that weird. I wrote it down weird. I think I, <laughs> I think I wrote down what the subtitle said. Uh huh. But whilst, while like, while sit, watching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> While summarizing it, you uh-huh. wrote in real time. Yeah. It was confusing. Um, yeah, so he basically tells her, don't run away, even if you're scared. Yes. Um, that is the gist. Yeah. And when he woke up, um, he was lonely to see that she was gone. That was when they slept together. Their one night stand yeah. thing. Yeah. And she woke up in the morning, flip shit, snuck her way out. Mm-hmm. Um, so he woke up and he was lonely because she left him. And he didn't want um, her to leave again in the morning. But then we see them wake up, and they're in separate beds for some reason. Like, this is fucking I Love Lucy. (laughs) What year is this? So did they, do you think they, do you think they had sex and just slept in separate beds? Or do you think they're, she was like, okay, good night. I won't go, I won't leave you in the morning. Good night. It just seems so weird. To not do it? Yeah. Or to just be like, "Uh okay, good night. Yeah. After, like, that whole conversation. Yes. Okay, but... Which is more weird, to have sex with someone and then sleep in a separate bed Uh five feet away from someone, Uh or to have a very intense and romantic conversation and then be like, good night, and then not have sex and then sleep in a bed Mm -hmm. five feet away from someone. I don't know. I feel like they're both very awkward. Yeah. (laughs) I personally feel like Tommy would bone and then be like, hey, good night. She seems like the type of person... I don't want you to hug me. I don't want you to cuddle me. Yeah. I, I sleep in a very certain way, and yeah. I get hot, What? so don't mm-hmm. touch me. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to sleep in the bed. She set. seems like a non-cuddler. Or maybe, like, they boned, and then he <laughs> fell asleep. And she was and like... And she just, like, wormed her way out and got ready for bed and went in the separate bed. She's like, I'm just going to sleep away from him, but I won't leave him. Maybe. I don't know. Just... But I know we're kind of skipping ahead, mm-hmm. but there is a scene later... Where it kind of seems like 
they're about to bone, uh-huh. and it seems, <laughs> and it seems like it's it's a momentous occasion for them. It's a big fucking deal. Yeah, I don't know. Well, maybe maybe we didn't see the rest of their conversation where they decided tonight wasn't the night. Maybe in the next episode, we're skipping ahead to predictions. Uh-huh. We're gonna, they're gonna flash back to oh, yeah. what happened in between. Yeah, probably. I they like to do that. I know my K dramas, guys. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm learning. I'm learning. Um. So yeah, they wake up. They're in separate beds. Morgan looks very happy to see Tommy when he wakes up, and he sneaks out of bed to wash his face and freshen up. It's funny how he like pulls out his phone, I think, and he like looks at himself, mm-hmm. and he like kind of flips his hair a little bit. He's trying to like do what they have women do in yeah. movies and TV. Where they, like, try to look all good and they're, like, trying to put on makeup Mm -hmm. in bed before the guy wakes up. It's really fucking stupid. Yeah, but when he, like, looked at himself in the selfie camera, I was... I hate looking at myself in the selfie camera. Oh, yeah. When you first wake up. When you're laying down, (laughs) especially. Oh, God. You have, like, tensions and your eyes are all (laughs) fucked and your hair is all gross. Like, Like, my face is all, like, kind of splotchy because I've been, like, sleeping on my... Yeah, you have, like, lines from the pillow all (laughs) in your face. (laughs) Like, is this what I look like? (laughs) Oh, God. But... Yeah, that's... No. I don't do that. Yeah. I accidentally do that sometimes when I'm, like, laying in bed, like, scrolling. Yeah. And I accidentally, like, slide to the... Like, launch your camera. Instagram stories. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> it's I, the worst. I hate when I do that. Okay. You're, like, looking down, too, and you scroll, and you accidentally swipe, like, Jesus, <laughs> what is this? You shock yourself. Yes. I don't think either of us are particularly unattractive or anything. Yeah. But just that angle when, you, when you're you not expecting it, you no fucking one shock looks yourself. Good. Like, no. No one looks good. Not from those angles. Not when you're... Not ready. <laughs> not when you're not posing and sucking yeah. in your double yeah. chin. <laughs> Turning to the good side of your face. Uh-huh. Fuck. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, so he's trying to make himself look real good before she wakes up. Tommy wakes up and teases him about washing up. <laughs> and he, he gets all upset. <laughs> and we love that none of y'all know why we do that. All upset. Why <laughs> FYI. Um, we'll probably never tell you either. It's too long and too stupid. Yeah. It's um, not worth it. No. But anyways, he's all, she's all, wait. <laughs> he gets all upset. <laughs> Thank you. He gets all upset. Um, and to alter, she couldn't, she could have pretended not to know. They get coffee. Tommy interrogates him. We learn where he's from, the origins of his name. Basically, his mom gave him an English sounding name so he could live abroad. Cute. His finances, criminal record, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Have you seen The Holiday starring Jude Law and Cameron Diaz um, and Jack Black and Kate Winslet? I feel like I did a very long time ago. I don't remember it. It's kind of one of my go-to movies for just like, this makes me feel good uh-huh. and sometimes I cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's a scene where Cameron Diaz, spoilers for The Holiday. Oh, no. <laughs> the movie that came out in, like, 2008 or something. Uh, and he gets so much hate mail. I know. Well, so there's a scene where Cameron Diaz to start, decides to start dating Jude Law, kind of. Mm-hmm. And she, like, does a full-on interrogation, like, Tommy. She's like, so why did you do this? And when did you do that? And he's, like, he answers her and he tells her, like, I feel like I'm at a job interview. Because, <laughs> like, yeah. she kind of does rapid-fire, like, serious questions to him. And just reminded me of that. see Cameron Diaz in it. Does she do? I feel like she does a lot of voice acting. Oh, really? I think so. Huh. Maybe I'm just thinking of Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. She's Fiona. <laughs> I mean, uh, maybe she didn't have to work after Shrek. Shrek's one, two, and three. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. But I feel like she did do something else voice-related, but I don't know. I could just... Yeah. I know. At one point, she did Charlie's Angels. Obviously, there's something about Mary, one mm-hmm. of the best movies. My Best Friend's Wedding. Mm-hmm. I think that was, like, one of her breakout mm-hmm. roles. Have you seen that movie? Mm-mm. Yeah, I'm all about, like, the 90s, early 2000s mm-hmm, rom-com, mm-hmm. or late 80s to 90s to 2000s rom-coms. <laughs> I'm just all about rom-coms, okay? I it doesn't you, matter. Yeah, I gotcha. Yeah, I always liked her. Anyway, enough about Cameron Diaz. Um, <laughs> Tommy tells Park Morgan that she's ready to start managing the fish tank. Mm. So he should be ready. Whatever that means. <laughs> he tells her he is. 
And if she wants to be a good manager, she needs to lean on him too and not isolate herself. Then they start teasing each other about their previous fish tanks in Pyojun Su. He hates that guy. Yeah, he sucks. Totally. So then we cut to Scarlet. She's wearing an LED face mask. Mm, and I want that's one what of that these. Was. I want one so bad. I didn't know what the fuck that was. But oh, really? Was cool, yeah. Yeah. Have you heard of like the LED like therapy? Mm, I don't think so. So I'm sorry. We've gone on like so many tangents. <laughs> <and> we have. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's more fun. I don't know. Maybe we'll see. But let us know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so Alex doesn't believe the science behind it because whatever. But. There have been studies that show, like, like LED light therapy, mm-hmm. uh, different the different lights and the wavelengths hitting your skin can help different things. So blue light is supposed to help with acne, apparently, and red light is supposed to help like stimulate collagen. I think it's so okay. that's like anti aging, and so sometimes you can have like purple light, I guess, which is both at the yeah. same time. Just as like an Blue overall. and red make purple, y'all. Yeah. In case you don't know, color theory. Yeah. So it's supposed to be like brightening, uh-huh. and so it kind of looked like hers might have been either red or purple. But so they make those like masks that you can put on, mm-hmm. and like those are really expensive mm-hmm. if you get them from like not Neutrogena. Which <laughs> I I read that the Neutrogena ones are getting recalled, maybe because Wee. people are like burning their eyeballs. Oh God. <laughs> I'm sure they're just not following directions, but... Yeah. Anyway, like, the one that she had, I've seen some online that are, like, $400 mm-hmm. or something, but there's one from Ulta that I really want that has great reviews. It's, like, 120 bucks, but it's not a mask. It's just, like, a, a stick. Oh, uh-huh. So I think it has, like, a head... Do you know what... Have you heard, um, heard of a Clarisonic? Mm-hmm. Okay, so it kind of seems like it's about the same size head as a Clarisonic, Maybe a little bigger, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't vibrate or anything. At least I don't think it does. But you just kind of, like, rub it around Mm -hmm. your face instead of just wearing, like, a mask the whole time. I'd like to wear a mask, though. I know. Because then you don't, your arm doesn't get tired. I'm so lazy. Well, it kind of seems like you can put, like, on a serum or, like, um, like a sheet mask. Mm -hmm. And, like, instead of, like, patting in the, like, leftover Mm -hmm. essence, you can kind of just, like, rub this thing around Mm -hmm. your face to kind of, like, soak it up or whatever. Uh Uh-huh. And then there's this one that all, that is more expensive that I want that also does, like, electromagnetic pulses mm-hmm. while you're doing it. So it's basically kind of, like, shocking your face yeah. into, like, tightening up. That sounds fun. I know. But, I mean, they're kind of an investment, I guess. Yeah. But the one from Ulta that's only, like, 120 bucks, I think, I don't know if it does both lights at the same time, but it has red and blue. Some of these, like, really expensive masks only have red. Uh-huh. And I read the reviews on Ulta, and apparently, like, the blue really works for people who, like me, have just, like, hormonal acne that mm-hmm. sometimes it doesn't even come to a head. It's just, like, mm-hmm. you just get a deep there. pimple, like, once a month, and they're like, this is the only thing that, like, curves it. And I'm like, oh, mm. God. I want that. <laughs> I want that. I want that so Alex, bad. I want that. So anyway, Scarlett's wearing an LED mask. Cool. Yeah. She's meditating, trying to calm down, because we remember last time mm-hmm. she found out that Pio jun is, like, a piece of shit mm-hmm. and um, was a two-timer, and that Tommy kind of betrayed her, sort of. Ish. Not really, kind yeah. of. Um, so the meditation app starts talking about forgiveness, mm-hmm. and she's like fuck that. <laughs> and she immediately goes to her computer and rereads the email that Pio jun Su's young girlfriend sent, the company, the whole company, and she fixates on the fact that um, the young girlfriend said that she dated him first and Scarlett came after. Mm-hmm. Like, she does not like the thought yeah. of being the second woman. Yeah, being the mistress. Uh-huh. Scarlett calls Pio jun Su and the young girlfriend answers. So again, if we remember... She took his phone when she was mm-hmm. like, your nose hairs are gross. So. Like, how the fuck did he not realize that his phone is this Well, thing? and then when Scarlet goes to, like, beat him up, and they're, his coworkers are like, haven't you read the email? And he's like, no, I lost my phone. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, 
If I lost... Okay, one, you work for a fucking tech company. Where you need your phone constantly. Yeah. Two, you're dating two different women, maybe more for all we fucking know. Yeah. Like, you you would have that thing on you. Right. At all times to make sure the other He's person... He's so clueless. It. It's crazy. Ugh, yeah. Whatever. Uh, so yeah, so Scarlet calls, the young girlfriend answers, and they're kind of like snarky to each other back and forth, but they decide to meet up, and yeah. I and craziness that ensues. Mm-hmm. We'll get to that in a second, then. Mm-hmm. Morgan lies to Tommy and tells her he took the train to the coast so he can ride back to town with her. Scarlet calls Tommy and tells her to meet Pyojun Su's girlfriend with her. Mm-hmm. And she basically says, like, you kind of owe me because mm-hmm. I did shit for you or whatever. Um, then we cut to the three women meeting up, and it's awkward and quiet. Mm-hmm. And the young girlfriend keeps being a... But, as you said, (laughs) to Scarlett and Tommy, and they have to keep holding each other back. Um, The young girlfriend ends up apologizing, and Scarlett and Tommy are shocked, but then she's still kind of a brat about everything and keeps bragging about how rich and famous she is. Like, she has her glasses, her sunglasses on Mm -hmm. at the beginning, and then she says in the end, I remember what, but she takes them off, and both of them are like, what? Mm -hmm. You're his girlfriend? Mm -hmm. They freak out, because she's apparently, like, she seems like she's maybe Instagram famous. I think she's. I don't a, know what she is. I think they said she's like a, a famous DJ. Like I think they're kind of more famous in Korea than they are in the U.S. But like, I, mean, I don't know. It's like but, Paris Hilton DJing. No, not not like a, a club DJ. Like she's a she's a radio DJ. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was just picturing, like, the photos of Paris Hilton with the headphones oh. on when she's DJing. <laughs> I mean, I think that's I, that's how I took mm-hmm. it anyway, because I know, like, there are some, like, some celebrities have radio shows okay. in Korea. That's how I took it. All right. Well, anyway, she's apparently super rich and famous. Um, the women talk about Scarlett's past dating experiences and how she's used to being cheated on. And then I said, but she's so pretty. Mm-hmm, she that's is. Suck. She's very pretty. Mm-hmm. Tommy tells her to turn the car around so they can go to a meeting with Unicorn's webtoon artist. So things quickly shift from, like, let's meet the shitty girlfriend, apparently, uh-huh. and now let's do work. Yeah, I, Scarlett even makes a comment. I think she's like, I don't want to work on the weekend. Uh-huh. I didn't call you out here to work. Um, but, yeah, I like how quickly Scarlett kind of forgave uh-huh. Tommy. So, uh, Ga Gyeong hosts the meeting of artists, and then starts to leave. She's basically like, eat and drink and have fun, mm-hmm. network. I'm leaving, because you don't want me here anyway. Uh, then she talks to a young artist named Artist Go, mm-hmm. and he complains about another artist named Kim Bik Jack, who is like the shitty dude from uh-huh. the previous episode. That was mean to Ellie. Yeah. She tells him that she wants to make his movie into a webtoon. So, that she wants to make Artist Go's movie. Yes, yes. Uh, because he's basically like, that guy sucks. Like, he's a piece of shit. And <laughs> he really is. Yeah. Um, and she was like, don't worry about him, but would you want your web to made into a movie? Mm-hmm. It kind of seems like she's trying to pacify him. Yeah. By saying that. So Tommy and Scarlett stake out the restaurant and see Gog Young talking to Artist Go. Tommy tells Scarlett Artist Go was Kim Bik Jack's student and that they have a bad relationship now. They try to figure out how they can get inside the meeting, and we get a little montage of Scarlett putting different masks They're on Tommy. So stupid. They're all so dumb. Yeah. I was like, this Why show do you have all this in your car? Also, she has, like, a sports car. It's not like she it's, has, like, a yeah, fucking no. Toyota Camry that has a big trunk or something. Wild. My friend that does photography stuff in Austin, like, mm-hmm. she's got a pretty small car. I forgot what kind it is. But one time, she opened her trunk, and it was just full of, like, all these costumes and, like, beautiful dresses and gowns. Like, what the fuck, dude? Why do you have all this in your car? It was just, like, packed with wigs and clothes oh my gosh. and all this shit. You never know. fuck, man? You never know when you're going to have a photo shoot. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, Gog Young goes home and visits her husband's room. She asks him to buy the rights to Artist Go's webtoon. Must be fucking nice to just, like, ask someone, hey, like, can you buy this? Mm-hmm. Or, like, can you make this or this happen? Okay. Yeah. But he, her life sucks also. I know, yeah. She's got a sad life. I guess I'd rather be, like, poor with no opportunity than many opportunities and depressed. Yeah. And with shitty people constantly. Yeah. Mm, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, he immediately agrees, 
he's a nice guy, I guess, and invites her to go to an award ceremony with him, but she declines. Tommy ends up wearing a hoodie, and her and Scarlett start eavesdropping. They witness a fight between artist Go and Kim Bakjak, right? Is that I think it's Bick Jack. Bick Jack. Kim Bick Jack. Artist Go claims that Kim Bick Jack stole one of his ideas and became rich off of it, which I totally believe. Mm-hmm. That sucks. Again. One of the artists recognizes Tommy in the bathroom and calls her out for spying. The artist tells Tommy that the money is about the same, but she's trying to figure out another reason why Bado would be better for her than Unicon. Tommy tells her she'll try to find a reason. Mm-hmm. Tommy's good at finding reasons. Yeah. And, like, the mm-hmm. artist was, like, pretty chill. Yeah. About spying. Mm-hmm. She's uh, like, hey. I, I know you. you. <laughs> um, um, Scarlet. Oh. I'm just going to read the, okay. the rest of this ridiculous moment. Scarlet sneaks out and sees the artist go and Kim Big Jack fight outside. She tries to step in because she's like fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. But um, that shitty artist ends up hitting Scarlet, like kind of push her out of the way. Mm -hmm. And he hits her pretty hard. Yeah. is kind of intense. She goes back to hit him, but at that moment, Tommy comes in and she like grabs her, whatever. Tommy calls the police and tells Scarlet the incident she get blown up, so one of the artists has to leave Unicon, and then they can go to Baro. Mm-hmm. So Tommy's just always thinking, like, how yeah, to make she's the company pretty better. conniving. Yeah, yeah, and I like how Scarlet was like, "Artist Go was about to get beat up." Like he's kind of a tiny dude. Uh-huh, yeah, she's like, "I saw everything. Like, uh-huh. He fucking hit me. That guy is shitty." Yeah, totally. So Morgan gets home, and his coworker starts talking to him about work. But Morgan is distracted that Tommy still hasn't replied to his text. It was like a, did you get home safe? Mm-hmm. Kind of a thing. Uh, Gog Young sees an article about the assault, the assault between the two mm-hmm. artists, and is super upset. She's like, I told him to have fun. Yeah, she's <laughs> like, All I, I left them there to like drink and eat food. Like, mm-hmm. what happened? Uh, the next day, the two artists and assault are trending, and Tommy tells Brian to forget about the ta- Tang Su Yuk and to have a post about one of the artists moving to Baro ready. The task force team has a meeting about how they will get the different artists to come over to Baro. It's kind of boring. Mm-hmm. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, Scarlett and Tommy talk about the situation while they are waiting for the elevator. The elevator door opens, and a man... Mm-hmm. <laughs> The actor's real life name, Lee Dong Wook, one of my favorite actors. I had no idea he was in this drama. <laughs> I I was like losing my shit. I was like, oh my god, oh my god, it's him. And then I like Google it just to make sure it was actually him. Uh-huh. And every everyone was like surprise cameo. Anyway, this guy comes out of the out of the elevator, and Tommy is like shook, and Scarlett leaves awkwardly because they're both just staring at each mm-hmm. other. Um. But, yeah, I'm kind of worried about him because he's kind of, like, really skinny. Like, his mm-hmm. head, doesn't his head look really big for his, like, skinny I didn't notice neck? it. Okay. But I wasn't really, like, paying attention to that, I guess. I yeah, was, I guess. I was more like, who is this guy? Yeah. Like, who, why is she so, like, in love, like, love at first sight? Yeah. Or no, not really. I guess if you don't know who he is, it kind of loses the impact yeah, of it. Yeah, I haven't it. seen him. But he's, like, a super famous Hmm. actor, so I guess it would be, like, if fucking, I don't know, like, Brad Pitt. Maybe not, like, that, but someone, like, super famous. <laughs> Wasn't well, it funny <laughs> when we saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood when he took off his shirt and then that one girl behind us <laughs> like, was like, yes! <laughs> and the whole movie theater laughed. <laughs> yes, I'm like, <laughs> That was so funny. It's so quiet. <laughs> I didn't even say it that loud either. <laughs> but, like, the whole theater laughed at her. Oh, God. That's embarrassing. <laughs> uh, so, he is her ex-boyfriend. Ew. I know. Another ex-boyfriend. I know. Tommy's gotten Damn. around. Yeah, I'm Tommy. <laughs> All right. They start doing some small talk, and he tells her that he's at Baro to hand out wedding invitations. Mm. Ouch. <laughs> uh, and they talk about how Tommy never wanted to get married. And basically that's why they broke up. Mm-hmm. He's relieved to hear she hasn't changed her mind, and he hands her an invitation. So, did you... I keep saying, did you ever see this romantic comedy? <laughs> did you ever 
see When Harry Met Sally? Um, no, actually. <laughs> I have not seen it. You should watch that I one. I feel like I haven't seen a lot of, like, the ones that are, like, classics. Oh, uh, okay. You know? like, I don't know. That one is really good. But there's a scene in this part, like, always makes me cry. Um, so he makes a comment like, I'm glad you haven't gotten married yet because I was afraid that it wasn't that you didn't want to get married. It's that you didn't want to marry me. That's what this guy said. I know. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> But there's... It's a, like exactly what this guy said. <laughs> well, yeah, because it's basically the same line from When Harry Met Sally, except Sally sees her ex ex-boyfriend, mm-hmm. um engaged, I think, to another woman. Like, her mm-hmm. and... So, she's Sally. Uh, Billy Crystal's Harry. Yeah. They're at, like, a sharper image or something, because it's, like, the 90s or, <laughs> like, 80s. And they run into them there, and she gets, like, obviously really upset mm-hmm. because they broke up. Shut up shit. Yeah, she's all upset <laughs> because he told her he didn't want to get married and he didn't want to have a family. Uh-huh. And so then she's crying to him later, and she says... It's not that he didn't want to get married. It's that he didn't want to marry me. Uh, so he, he kind of, like, flipped it around. Yeah. But I was, like, once he said that, I was, like, ding. My romantic comedy mm-hmm, little mm-hmm. brain went off. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I was, like, oh, it's rough. Yeah, that was an interesting scene. I wasn't expecting that at all. No, but it does set up mm-hmm. What's coming stuff. up. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I love that we got that little cameo. His, like, four lines. Like, I don't know. It's just crazy to me that he just showed up and did Made that. An appearance. Yeah. Um, Ga Gyeong's husband goes to visit Han Min Gyu. Gyu? I think so. I don't um, know. <laughs> Han Min Gyu is super apologetic and really awkward with the husband. This is a guy that almost committed suicide? Yes. Yes. Who was like her yeah. kind of her, her escort boyfriend escort dude. thing? Yeah. Yeah. Ga Gyeong's husband tells the actor to be someone Ga Gyeong can depend on. And he also tells him that he's going to be in a movie at the end of the year, so start training. And Han Min Gyu is super confused and asks why he's helping him after, like, everything that's come out. And the husband replies he feels pity for Ga Gyeong. Yeah, because the actor is like, I promise I won't see her anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, And he's like, no, like, keep talking to her. She be, needs someone. <laughs> be who she wants, who uh-huh. she would want or whatever. It's really weird and uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And naturally, that guy is like, what the fuck? These people are weird. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, All those Gyeong, rich people. <laughs> I know. Rich people and their weird problems. Mm-hmm. Ga Gyeong meets with the CEO, and they talk about the assault case at an escort club area thing again. Um, and Oh, yeah. I I think the CEO did that to make her feel uncomfortable. Yeah, don't most likely. Think? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But she, I think she... She handled herself well. Yeah, totally. I I mean, it kind of seems like they've been to a place like Mm -hmm. that before, maybe, but just, like, the timing of it is very, Mm -hmm. yeah, Whether or not, yeah, I I don't know. Whatever. Um, She kind of leans into it and tells the CEO to let her choose the place next time, since she knows a better club. So she's Mm -hmm. kind of just, she's kind of just, like, one of the guys, I feel like. She's kind of owning it. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she's not going to let anything kind of stir her up or mm-hmm. make her feel a certain way. She's probably used to it. Anyway. Yeah, her mother-in-law. I know. She's, like, formed a shell around mm-hmm. her. Son. <laughs> Poor lady. Mm-hmm. So Morgan runs into Tommy on the street, just kind of by coincidence. Mm-hmm. She looks super happy to see him, like, oh, hey, you, kind of a <laughs> thing. But he's all mopey because she didn't reply to his text or call him for two days. Mm-hmm. That is kind of a long time mm-hmm. after they maybe or maybe didn't bone bone <laughs> and have a deep conversation about her, like, yeah, being with him. So two days, and that's kind of a long time. Also because he said, did you get home safe? Yeah. Like... So she could have just, like, died on her way home. Yeah. I'll... All she needed to be was, like, thumbs up emoji. Mm-hmm. Home emoji. Home <laughs> yes. I made it. Um, so he kind of lashes out, and she thinks it's cute and apologizes. But I, I don't like it when people laugh when someone's, like, venting. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's very demeaning. Or they're like, why didn't you call me? Like, I was worried about you, and I was texting you, mm-hmm. and, like, you never responded. Ha <laughs> ha. 
You're cute. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd be like, no, screw you. <laughs> Fuck off. I'm leaving. <laughs> uh, but he doesn't do that. Mm-mm. Uh, oh, so yeah. She tells him that she will be more thoughtful and call him in the future. Mm-hmm. And he's like, okay, I guess I have a meeting. Bye. <laughs> Uh, Scarlet watches her drama at the gym and gets super excited, but she still can't find the actor's profile online. Who is he? Mm-hmm. Um, the two artists from before start fighting on social media now, so everyone knows their business. Mm-hmm. Kim Bake Jock ends up having a press conference and crying. People online seem to believe him over artist Go, um, and they're basically taking sides, as always happens on the internet yeah, social it, media. It kind of seems like they're just taking his side because he's, like, the more famous yeah, one. Yeah, he's most popular. Mm-hmm. Tommy wants to bring Kim Bick Jock over, but Scarlett thinks they should bring Artist Go. And basically she's reasoning the fact that that guy's a fucking asshole. He beat him up. He was mean to Ellie. Like, mm-hmm. why do we want to fuck with this guy? She tells Tommy that she will testify against Kim Bick Jock. And Scarlett feels morally responsible to help because she did see them fighting Mm -hmm. and she tried to break it up. And then Tommy and Scarlett end up fighting over convictions and ethics and the usual stuff. Scarlett kind of calls Tommy out. Mm -hmm. And I love that she does that. Yeah. I don't, I I mean, I understand Tommy's reasoning, but I also don't think it's a good idea. Yeah. Because we all know how shitty he is. Totally. Why do you want to work with someone like that? Yeah. Um, God Young calls artist Go, but he hangs up on her. And Scarlet meets um, God Young at the elevator outside of artist Go's apartment. So it's, I mean, they're all after the same people, mm-hmm. which is really awkward. Um, but their dynamic, as you mentioned, is super unique. Scarlet immediately turns into a little girl in front of God Young, which is interesting because normally you see her and she's pretty tough. Yeah, she's like really intense. Mm-hmm. And in front of God Young, she's like, Sunday? Mm-hmm. Like, her voice. Yeah, it changes. changes. It's kind of weird. Yeah, they end up talking a little bit about work, but Ga Gyeong says she doesn't want to talk about work so they can stay friends. They instead talk about Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> Scarlet calls her a bitch, but Ga Gyeong defends her a little bit and says she's under tough circumstances too. Scarlet asks if she's on Tommy's side. So yeah, so when she said that, I was like, what? Yeah, damn. So, Tommy goes to Morgan's place for some comfort after Scarlet hurt her feelings. Uh, Because Scarlet basically was like, you have, like, no morals. Like, you're Mm -hmm. a piece of shit, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, Did not hold back. Right. She gives a long speech in the car, and Morgan ends up falling asleep. (laughs) uh, Because he's been up for, like, ever, over 24 hours, like, Mm -hmm. working on music and stuff. Um Tommy calls Scarlett and tells her she respects her opinion and to give her some time to think about the situation. Morgan tells her all sleepy (laughs) that he's been up for 32 hours. He asks her to recap what she was saying, and she tells him that she was hating herself, but she feels happy to have him. And they end up holding hands in the car. Cute. Yeah, I like how he's like, I think he asks her, can you drive with one hand? And she's like, of course I can drive with one hand. Like, mm-hmm. I've been driving for however long. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's funny that Tommy, like, sometimes she seems a little self-conscious about her age. But I, it's never really about her age. It's more about Morgan's age yeah. being young. But she's always like, I've lived this long and I know mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. I think it's funny. Scarlett is kind of distracted. She ends up thinking about Tommy um, in that phone call. Mm-hmm. And... She sees a bad guy running from the cops, and she's really conflicted. She can't decide whether to butt in or not because, like, she ends up getting in trouble a lot of times mm-hmm. for, you know, sticking her nose where she probably shouldn't. Fighting with people. Uh-huh. Getting a criminal record. I think she even mentions, like, I can't get in trouble again. I can't <laughs> enter my record. Um, but at the last minute, she ends up tripping the criminal again because he's wearing all black and, like, a hat. Mm-hmm. Um, classic. Yes. Bad guy wardrobe. Yes, bad guy. And she pins him to the ground and is like, why are you running from the cops? She recognizes him as the actor from the drama mm-hmm. that she can't find. And she starts giving him a hard time, basically saying, like, you're a bad guy in real life, too? <laughs> and he's like, no, we're in the middle of filming. And she's super embarrassed. And then, like, all of the crew, like, comes out from... That's like so the, ridiculous. The sides, like they're all hidden, and he's like, "We were filming this with hidden cameras, so it looked like more realistic, uh-huh. I guess." Um, 
So she ends up sitting with him in the hospital. I think he, like, fractured his foot or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, again, she's, like, very apologetic. He asks her to stay since he doesn't have a manager. And they talk a little bit, and he seems a little interested in her. And she is fascinated by him when he pulls out his phone to get her mm-hmm. number. It's a flip phone. And, like, they just seem like totally different people. Yeah. Like, he's, like, a super sweet guy who's, like, very simple. And she's, like, very intense. Mm-hmm. That was a very interesting scene, and I was not expecting that. I know. That was great. I was like, damn, Kate was right. (laughs) They do meet. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Um, We cut to Gak Young's monster mother-in-law, and she's tattooing someone. (laughs) So fucking random. I know. She's insane. They've made this woman insane. Yeah, absolutely. Like, she's a psychopath. Um, the CEO is there, and they talk about business stuff, and the CEO kind of throws Gok Young under the bus for something, and the mother-in-law gets gets mad at the CEO for doing that. Like, you're not allowed to do that shit to her. Like, who are you to talk about my daughter-in-law? Mm-hmm. Only I get to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, we then cut to the hospital, and the actor Sol, Sol Ji Hwan? I think so, yeah. Hwan? is watching his drama with a bunch of old ladies in the hospital room. And they keep teasing him and hitting him for his character being a jerk. They're just, like, being cute. Yeah. But Scarlet comes by and is like, what the fuck? Like, what's happening here? Why are y'all all with him? What's going on? Yeah. She moves him to a private room, and they have a nice little moment when she admits to being a fan of his. Uh-huh. It's really cute. Yeah. I like them together. Mm-hmm. So Tommy calls Scarlett and tells her to meet her at an address. Uh, Scarlett shows up, and it ends up being a meeting with Artist Go. Scarlett is shocked, and Tommy starts trying to negotiate the meeting and how Artist Go can defend himself. Scarlett says she'll testify, and he's super thankful. I think he's, like, crying. because he's, he's really upset because nobody's believing him. Yeah, and basically everyone on the internet has shunned him, Mm -hmm. and they've all taken... The, that other guy's side. Yeah. Uh, Tommy puts the contract in front of him and tells him it's an honor to work with him, which is sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tommy tells Scarlett she considered her opinion, and Tommy also tells Scarlett that she's going to bury Kim Beck Jack in the field so that he can't have anything. <laughs> like, she has to fuck somebody over, uh-huh, I guess. Uh-huh. Um, and I guess she wants to do that so she can bring in the female artist, Jong Hee Jin. And this ends up working. So basically, she realized... So the reason that Tommy wanted to take Kim Bikjok, the more popular artist, is because, like, his webtoons are the most popular mm-hmm. on the internet. And she realized, though, that if she took Artist Go and the female artist, those are, like, actually two good people. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, personality-wise. Yeah, and collectively, those two would maybe bring in the same amount of or views more. or whatever as that one, like... Mm-hmm. Terrible artist. Yeah, that's a much better idea. Mm-hmm. It's better when Tommy thinks about her ideas. Yeah, like, instead of just actually being implementing like, them. Mm-hmm. This is what we can do fast. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's like, slow your roll. about all of the different avenues you could go. Mm-hmm. Scarlett and Tommy go over to Unicon and meet with Guy Young to negotiate the contracts. Because again, currently, those webtoon artists are with Unicon. Um, the meeting gets really awkward when Gog Young starts asking why Tommy brought Scarlet and how she's changed because of her. Gog Young tells them that they can have the artist, and she brings up Morgan, how Tommy needs to let him sleep, which is really awkward. Mm-hmm. Tommy brings up Gog Young's conditions for the deal. The camera gets really crazy and, like, Zoom zooming in. <laughs> in and out, and she tells Tommy that she wants Cha Hyun, Scarlet. Then we get a bunch of close-up shots of all of their faces, all confused, like, what? What? How? Huh? <laughs> and you were watching, uh-huh. so you can tell your little yeah, bit. Yeah, so, like, we're getting all these different angles, and I just keep going to Alex, like, like, I just keep turning my head, like, what? What? Like, with every new shot, and I'm just like, Alex, Alex, oh my god, Alex. <laughs> Come I just, on. I just wasn't expecting that at all. Yeah. Like, I wasn't expecting that to come out of her mouth, and I was like, and then I thought, is she gonna go? Like, yeah, because they are friends. Yeah, and I mean, basically, oh, I don't know if they. You, I guess I started talking about this in the next episode, but like, like we were saying earlier, Scarlet is very influenced. I think by mm-hmm. Gagian, like yeah. she seems very impressionable whenever she's speaking. So it's like, well, I don't know. 
So yeah, I was very excited. Oh well, yeah, with that ending. So should we just move on to episode Let's eight? Do it. Yeah. Okay. They basically, just intertwine. Yeah. So eight starts with a flashback of young Cha Hyun, Scarlet, jumping a wall and meeting Ga Kyung. Except like they didn't. He didn't do that to meet up with her. Like mm-hmm. they, uh, Ga Kyung is just ends up being on the other side of the wall. So um, they both are like we're cutting class. And, oh, I think it's because uh, Cha Hyun is like, oh, it's you. Because she, like, still has a crush on her at this mm-hmm. point. Um, and it's just, like, it's a little awkward. But, yeah, they're like, okay, bye. We're cutting class. But then uh, Cha Hyun sees Ga Gyeong <laughs> being, like, hassled by those boys. So mm-hmm. a few episodes ago, we see them, like, fighting or whatever. So, um so yeah so then we see scarlet step in fight the dudes that are giving gag young the hard time but then one of the dudes hits scarlet from behind with like a wooden stake thing insane i know i'm like dude this is like a young girl and you are like an older boy Mm -hmm. one you shouldn't even bring weapons into it since she didn't use weapons Mm -hmm. and two like you shouldn't be like hitting people with fucking trash (laughs) awful Um, so, it's, like, rough. Like, she goes down hard, and the thing is, like, she was supposed to be, like, a super good athlete. Like, Mm -hmm. maybe going to the Olympics or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, she was really good. And her fall looked really hard. And she's fucked because of Gog Young. Uh-huh. So, we cut to the present where Gog Young is asking for Scarlet, and Tommy and Gog Young talk more business stuff. Uh, Tommy asks Scarlet what she thinks, and Scarlet asks Tommy to leave so that she can talk to Ga Gyeong in private. And Tommy's like, I don't want to leave. I'm uh-huh. not going to leave. <laughs> Why? Yeah, but then she ends up leaving. Reluctantly. Mm-hmm. Scarlet tells Ga Gyeong that she doesn't like being used, and Ga Gyeong tells her that she's not using her. She genuinely wants her to come work for her. Scarlet recalls her past again, and we see Scarlet think about how, how Ga Gyeong took her under her wing. And said she would take responsibility for her since she had to quit judo, judo mm-hmm. because of her injury. Then we get a montage of Ga Young taking care of Scarlet. A lot of taking care of each other. Mm-hmm. Healing each other. Mm-hmm. Cleaning wounds. Yes. Licking wounds. <laughs> Licking wounds. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ga Young still feels guilty about killing Scarlet's dream. But Scarlet tells her that she gave her, new, gave her a new dream and a living. Ultimately, Scarlet tells her that she's changed, and we cut to Scarlet telling Tommy they need to find another condition so they can sign Artist Go. Tommy throws a little fit, and they tease each other about Scarlet leaving. And I like at that point, I think it's there, where um, Tommy's just complaining, and Scarlet looks at her, and she's like, you're just so cute. Mm -hmm. And just, like, walks away, and Tommy's like, what? I'm older than you. (laughs) What the fuck? Like, why are you talking to me like that? And why are you talking to me, um... So, informally, like, yeah. when I'm older. Yeah, it's because Tommy's like, I don't know why you had to kick me out. And, like, maybe you should just go work for her because blah, 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 Yeah, blah. Like, she just won't <laughs> stop talking. Uh-huh. Um, Tommy gets a text from Morgan while she's working late, and he shows up at her office. She's super surprised that oh he my looks God, this hot. Scene. <laughs> uh, she... I guess it's just, like, super horny and gets distracted. Because she didn't bone in bone. the last episode. I know. We'll never know. But <laughs> until maybe next episode, mm-hmm. what happened in that hotel room. But she's very distracted by his hairstyle. So Because he's doing a little flip. Yeah, he's he's got his hair pushed back, showing it's, that forehead. It's not covering his forehead. I don't like that look. Yeah. Blech. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so his hairstyle, and he has a semi-low-cut shirt. It's not that low-cut, but no. she makes a point to talk about, like, that his chest is visible, but it's, like, it, barely. I know, it's really interesting to me, like, the different, I guess, dress uh-huh. code, like, what is appropriate, because, yeah, they're conservative. So, uh, but he's showing basically just his collarbone. Right? Maybe mm-hmm. a little bit past his collarbone. Yeah. Uh, she drives him home, and they flirt, but she ends up just dropping him off. Again, I'm like, you already had the conversation about opening the fish tank. Like, yeah, just do it. What's going on? 
are you on birth control? Like, <laughs> you're old? I don't know. What's going on? Um, so Scarlet runs into Pyo Jun Su, and he's still an idiot asshole. Mm-hmm, naturally. Mm-hmm. Uh, she goes to visit the d- actor in the hospital, but he's asleep, and she does that K-drama thing, uh, where she just watches him sleep. And then he wakes up. <laughs> and he tells her that she was in his dream. Mm. And he kind of confesses his feelings for her while he's, like, still half asleep. Like, Which is interesting. Yeah, like, basically he just tells her, like, I'm just happy you're here. Like, mm-hmm. I'm happy to see you. And then he falls back asleep. He barely knows her. Mm-hmm. But whatever. Um, Scarlet talks to Alex about things that the actor does. Like how his phone is really old, mm-hmm. and his favorite insect, which is the canker worm. Yeah, I think it's like a caterpillar. Yeah, it's really cute. Uh-huh. She's like looking at videos of it walking. Uh huh. Um, so she's she's doing all this without naming names. Brian and Baro and the Tang Su Tang Su Yuk mm-hmm. emoticon start trending, and he made that video basically apologizing to the other side uh-huh, of the, the debate. Dippers. Yes. And saying, like, we're going to make one for you guys, too, and we totally understand, and I'm very sorry, blah, blah, blah. Um, they talk more business stuff, and um, we see an ad for TikTok. So everything's kind of happening all at once. It's back to business. Everyone's playing with apps and stuff. Yeah, it's like product placement for TikTok. Yeah, and Brian is very happy because he's, like, trending everywhere, and mm-hmm. bottles trending, and he ever he's, like, walking down in the office, and they're like... Brian, you're so cool. Yeah. <laughs> He's just, just like, like, yeah. <laughs> like his chest all so puffed cute. out. So yeah. cute. So funny. I love Brian. Brian treats the staff to dinner, but only Tommy shows up. Morgan calls Tommy, and Brian tells her to invite him to dinner. He shows up, and everyone's getting along really fine. It's just mm-hmm. a nice dinner between the three of them. Tommy and Morgan start holding hands under the table, which Ooh. is funny and always so like awkward like i know you're seeing like where their arms are going you know like, it's obvious like yeah. her arm is on his leg area like mm-hmm. i don't know whatever but i just i love the hidden hand yeah. holding in the k-dramas the, just... the eyes that they make towards each yeah. other when it's happening so exciting um so yeah that's happening and then it somehow gets in the conversation about marriage and he starts talking about his marriage and then asks, like, how do you guys feel? Like, are, are you planning to get married? And at first it seemed like he was asking the two of them if the two of them plan to get married to each mm-hmm. other. Uh-huh. And I was like, wait, how does he know that they have something going on? Yeah. But no, I think he was just asking them just in general. Yeah. What like, are your thoughts or whatever? Uh-huh. And at the same time, um, Morgan says, yes, I do. Tommy says no. Yeah. And then it gets really awkward. And then they're like, hmm? Mm-hmm. And they both equally answer him um and tommy basically says that she doesn't want to get married he does and he's always wanted to have a family he's always thought that that's like what everything was about Mm -hmm. tommy on the other hand says she likes her life and the freedom that she has now and like as she's about to say that she like pulls her hand away from him yeah uh, which is like oh extra awkward yeah totally Mm. uh the mother-in-law meets up with a politician the president question mark i think that was the president? Yeah, they were saying president, and I was okay. wondering, like, president of... Korea? <laughs> yeah, I was, I was confused. I think I think he's, like, the newly elected president. Oh, side note. Um, when I was watching, I had a thought that Ga Gyeong, off topic, Ga Gyeong's husband looks like an Asian Barack Obama? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. You need to look at it again. Okay, I'll I'll keep that in mind. You talk. I'm going to find a photo of this guy real quick. Okay. Also, Google if he's the North Korean from Descendants of the Sun. I don't think he is. Okay. But I'll look that up, too. Okay. Um, so, the president of Korea, question mark? <laughs> he laughs at her and comments on how KU Group has influenced the country. And basically, he's kind of, like, simultaneously calling her out and being mm-hmm. like, but also, you could help me, maybe. But also, you're a piece of shit. Like, it's kind of weird. It's kind of awkward. Yeah. But they st- kind of start making plans. So, a grumpy old dude comes in to borrow, 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 and um, he demands that they compensate him since his face was shown on the site while he was having an affair. I think it's kind of like a Google Maps situation, um, but instead of having his face um, blurred out, the woman that he was with, her face was blurred out, but it was just, like, a profile shot of him. Yes. So it didn't, the AI didn't recognize it as a face. So, 
Um, and like, you, it's kind of hard to recognize him anyway. So, but apparently his wife saw this and they're standing outside like a motel. So it's kind of obvious what's going on there. Um, so the team debates whether or not to compensate the guy. Oh, no! cause he, cause he's like, you owe me because my life is ruined now and my wife and I are getting a divorce and if you guys had done your job and blurred my face out, she would have never seen and blah, blah, blah. So Tommy decides not to compensate him. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So looking at photos of this guy online, I don't really see it. <laughs> but I swear when I was watching it, I saw it. But like Maybe in his photo, suits. Like the bottom half of him. Oh, Like I, the mouth it, region. The nose too. Okay. Yeah, and like the, the little lines, like the lines that go from your nose down yeah, yeah. to like your, your smile, whatever. Yeah. Smile lines, I guess. That's kind of Barack Obama y. And then his ears kind of stick out a little bit. Yeah, that's true. And I think just like under certain lighting in this show. In the suits. Yeah, yeah but yeah. like other photos, like, no. Definitely <laughs> not there. <laughs> no, yeah. For some reason in that series, like, I don't know. Did, is he descendants of the sun guy? Oh, um, let me see. Uh, let me see. Well, just is that cut, his Wikipedia? Cut all this awkward silence up. Oh, yeah, descendants of the sun. On, on June. June, June. Yeah. On June. I called it. Damn, Caitlin. I called everything. I've only seen that drama, like, fucking 17 times or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Okay, so. Well. I'm not going to say it. Never mind. <laughs> um, God Young ends up showing up to the racetrack and surprises her husband. And this is where I was like, damn, we can't look like Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tommy thinks about her ex getting married and how he asked her about not wanting to get married. Morgan calls Tommy and tells her not to worry about his thoughts on marriage. She tells him it's hard not to think about it since it's such a big deal. I mean, it doesn't seem like either person would change their mind. And she basically breaks up with him at that point. <laughs> yeah. Um, since it seems like the relationship would have an expiration date and just end badly. Which yeah. Because is... he's kind of like, we can still have fun. Mm-hmm. And she was like, no. but, I mean, maybe, but also, at the end of the day, we know, like... Each other's feelings. We know each other's feelings, and we know, like, we can keep having fun until when? Mm-hmm. Until you're ready to have a family, mm-hmm. or what? Until I get tired, like, yeah, it's just bad news bears. Yeah. Um, back at the track, the husband asks why Ga Young showed up. She tells him that she's thankful um, for wanting, for agreeing to take that Webtoons movie or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, he's like, you told me not to do that, blah, 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 whatever. Um, then, later on, when he's away from her... He tells someone to block pictures of them together, which is really awkward. Yeah. It's like, okay, damn. Is it be, I'm wondering if, like, he doesn't want it, um, like, if their relationship is supposed to be kind of, like, on the down low. Like, basically everyone knows that they just got mm-hmm. married for business purposes, mm-hmm. and it would maybe even be, like, more of a scandal for them to actually be seen, like, yeah. liking each other. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, after he has that conversation with someone, he runs into the president's son and they have a little bit of words back and forth, but then the president's son insults their marriage, um, and Ga Gyeong, and he basically like flips shit yeah, and he like him. grabs his tie and is choking him with the tie. Yeah. It's, oof, it's crazy. Yeah. I didn't expect that either. Yeah. I was like, Okay. I guess he turned into his descendants of the sun. <laughs> North Korean soldier. <laughs> um, so Scarlet barges into the actor's hospital room. It's like a very quick... Oh, I think um, before... What's his face? The North Korean soldier <laughs> slash God Young's <laughs> husband lets the president's son go. He kind of is like, you think you worked your way to the top, but like you still don't have anything mm-hmm. because... like. Basically, like, you work your way to the top, but you still have nothing to fall back on. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, I was born rich. So, even if I fucked I'm up, good. like, I'm good. Yeah. Which is kind of shitty. Like, yeah. that's messed up. Um, Scarlet barges into the actor's hospital room after she watches the drama, and his character is killed off. She's like, what's happening? Mm-hmm. Did you know you were getting killed off? 
Apparently he didn't know that would happen, and he found out when everybody else did, which is terrible. Yeah. Can you imagine being like, oh, I don't have a job anymore? Yeah. <laughs> Like, that's just awful. And it seemed like he had an important role on the show, too. Yeah, it looks like he was, like, the male lead or Mm -hmm. something. Um, So he didn't know that would happen, and Scarlet is like, uh, no. So she brings the actor (laughs) in a wheelchair. In his gown. Yeah, to to the set of the drama, and she becomes his manager. She, like, totally bluffs her way into, like, talking to the director and the writer and everything. Um... And she fights for the actor, um, she basically fights for him and yells at everybody and tells them to revive the character. And she even comes up with, like, a plot point. (laughs) I think they're like, we can't revive him, like, we basically, like, fully killed him off. And she was like, what if he had a twin brother and this, this, and this? And they're (laughs) like, okay, yeah, that could be good. Oh, a good, a good twin brother, like, the evil twin Mm -hmm. brother got killed off. Mm -hmm. And she was like, that way you can show a good side of him and whatever. And they're like, oh, that's a good idea. Like, that's just the most obvious plot point you could do. Like, classic evil twin, but good twin situation. (laughs) Um, Scarlet drops the actor off at the hospital. And it's a little bit awkward, but he basically tells her not to help him anymore. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And they part ways. And I'm sure he felt a little uncomfortable having her drag him to the set. Yeah. And he's, like, telling these people stuff that he worked with. I don't know. I would have been uncomfortable. Yeah, I'm personally. sure he feels, like, uh, embarrassed. Yeah. But, like, half thankful, half embarrassed. Like, I can't believe she did that. But, like, also kind of, like, now he might feel, like, indebted to her because mm-hmm. she basically got him his job back. Yeah. Just all around kind of awkward. Um, Tommy meets with Ga Young and gives her the ledger that proves Ga Young's husband manipulated the keywords in exchange for the artist. Ga Young agrees. Tommy then meets with her piano teacher, and they talk about marriage, and the teacher agrees that if she met someone who didn't want to get married, she would break up with them. Yeah, because the piano teacher wants to get married. Yeah. I like how Tommy just goes to the piano teacher to, like, vent about... Uh-huh. and hear her play piano. Uh-huh. Tommy doesn't really play. No, she just, like, eats with her mm-hmm. and listens to her play piano, mm-hmm. and is like, so hypothetically, yep. and then she just ends up always leaving early. <laughs> that lady is, like, very patient yep. with her. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. I want more of that woman. Yeah, she's really pretty. They don't show her enough. Uh, Tommy and Morgan meet up again. They talk more about marriage and why people would or wouldn't get married and the fact that they like each other and they make each other happy. Tommy tells him that eventually someone will have to give up their dreams slash plans or they break up. And he tells her to stop thinking about the end. Even marriages end. Being together might be more valuable. She tells him that even though things end, it's easier to start things off with a good note. And she can't help but already see their end. Yeah, it's basically like, he's like, well, marriage doesn't end like someone dies or you mm-hmm. get divorced. And she's like, yeah, but you don't start a marriage thinking it'll end. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. nobody starts a relationship that way. Yeah. She tells him not to waste his time on her. It's an important time in his life, and she leaves. Yeah. Tough. Yes. He looks very sad. Yeah. Um, the man... From earlier, like the cheater, mm-hmm. ends up suing Bado, which creates more buzz for Bado. Uh, Tommy tells Joseph and Ellie she will pay for him now. Yeah, she will pay him now, like pay him off, compensate, compensate. Yes. Um, and everyone's like, "What?" <laughs> uh, the mother-in-law tells Gog Young to post an article on Unicon that is fake news, or like kind of manipulated, mm-hmm, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gog Young refuses. The mother-in-law shows up. She's super scary. Uh, she chews Ga Young out, and, like, she just kind of keeps piling on her. Mm-hmm. But Ga Young is standing her ground and basically tells the mother-in-law to back off uh, because she needs Unicon to, like, stay relevant politically. And she, Ga Young, helped build it. So basically it's like, don't take my baby away. Mm-hmm. One, because you need it. Two, because I worked really hard to make mm-hmm. it what it is today. And then the mother-in-law walks out all dramatically. Mm-hmm. She's all upset. All upset. <laughs> uh, Scarlet and Tommy meet with the cheater from earlier. Um, oh, because Scarlet's, like, pissed that Tommy yeah. says she's going to compensate him now. The women lure him in by saying they'll compensate him, but really they have an agreement to compensate his wife 
since she's the one going through a hard time with the divorce. Mm -hmm. He gets all upset. (laughs) Everyone's upset. I know. (laughs) And the women tell him to keep going with the lawsuit if he doesn't want the compensation. Ooh. I know. I'm like, yes. Tough ladies. Mm -hmm. Morgan shows up and gives Tommy another speech about the relationship, and they end up playing Tekken and getting drinks like when they first met. Morgan asks Tommy if she would go after him if he left and she like and if she likes him enough to ignore her feelings about the future. She doesn't say anything and he takes that as a no. He tells her that they should stop and offers to take her home even though he's hurt. Mm-hmm. So sad. I know. He walks her to her door and asks what the relationship would have been like if they hadn't slept together the first time they met, if they had misunderstood that they are similar people. He tells her it's one of his regrets and wishes that it would have happened that way. And then he basically tells her to have a nice life and walks away. Tommy goes into her apartment, but then ends up going after him. Mm -hmm. They meet each other at the elevator. She, like, opens the elevator. He's there. Mm -hmm. They stare. The elevator closes. She opens the elevator. He's there. They stare. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Goes on and on. Mm -hmm. So they're staring for a while, and he asks her if he should not go. She replies no. And they start making out. And then they probably bone. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. What a roller coaster. Yeah, there was a lot going on there. (laughs) I know. I'm excited now. Oh, yeah. How are you feeling? Good. Good. Yeah, I'm I'm very excited to watch the next two episodes. Definitely. A lot happened. I know. I already have some predictions now that I'm, like, reading everything. What Should we do fashion still? Or do you want to jump to predictions? We need predictions first. Okay. This might be a long shot. And I feel like I maybe subliminally, like, not subliminally, but, like, just subconsciously I may have saw an image on uh-huh. Twitter that supports this theory. So I don't know. This might be kind of cheating. But what if Morgan and the piano teacher meet? Because they both play piano and oh. they seem to be around the same age. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I could see that, yeah. Like... And, like, that girl knows how to play his song. Yes! Because Tommy gave her the music to learn it. Oh. What if, like... Ah, I'm getting <laughs> chills. What if a friend is, like, practicing somewhere and she's uh-huh. just, like, noodling with that song and he's, uh-huh. like, walking by and he's like, that's my song. Yeah, and they both are young, hot people that want families. Mm-hmm. And Tommy mm-hmm. is just going to be the woman who, like made their happiness mm-hmm. happen for them and she's just gonna like keep being a boss bitch mm-hmm. and like not and falling in love with getting... guys whenever she feels like it yeah oh, what if that's how it ends oh my god that's quite possible honestly well that's my prediction <laughs> <laughs> all right i don't think i have any prediction to top that one i like that prediction I was just thinking about it when we were, like, talking about the piano teacher, and I'm like, she wants a family. Mm-hmm. They both play piano. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're both young. I don't know. But but at this point, it kind of seems like they're going to stay together, so. Yeah. But I guess maybe they could still kind of be, like, in the fish tank phase mm-hmm. or whatever, like, not super committed, and then maybe he, like, mm-hmm. meets the teacher and he feels conflicted. Mm-hmm. And then we'll have that classic K-drama thing where people are talking about each other, but they don't realize the mm-hmm, person that they're talking mm-hmm, about. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. We'll see. Oh, yeah. I guess we'll see what happens. love triangle. Mm-hmm. So we're, like, what, halfway Yeah, this there, is the right? halfway uh-huh. point, yeah. So a lot can happen still. Totally. <sighs> Damn. Okay. Maybe I should write a K-drama. <laughs> you should, yes. I think so. Just fan fiction? Mm-hmm. Write that fanfic. No one's writing me. <laughs> okay, I will write fanfiction. I will write Search WW. I want I want fanfic that like combines all the dramas we've seen. Okay. Somehow they're all like intertwined. That's I, what I want. I think I can make that happen. It's like the whatever degrees of separation. Like uh-huh. this person was in this drama with this person who was in this drama <laughs> with this person. Yes. <laughs> they all live in the same universe. Yes. 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 Yeah, I don't have any fucking predictions. That was a good one. Thanks. I'm all for that one. I'm going to be sad if it's true and sad if I'm not. 
<laughs> Either way, I was Caitlin's like, being right. be sad. No, I kind of want. I want to be surprised, but I will feel like very validated if I'm right again. So I, I guess it's more of a win-win than a lose-lose. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Uh, so fashion. Yes, God. Yes. Um, I like Scarlett's tracksuits, and I kind of want a matching tracksuit now. Yeah, she wears them well. Yeah. I was, like, so close to going on eBay and being like, like okay. Puma tracksuit. <laughs> I used to want, like, the Kill Bill one. Oh, the yeah. The yellow one that uh-huh. she wore. Yeah. Good luck. I know. I'm like, where would I fucking wear a tracksuit? And, like, I would never wear it together at the same time like she does. Like, mm-hmm. it would just end up being, like, me just wearing those pants to bed and, like, uh-huh. wearing the jacket when I'm, like, cold inside of our house or something. And you gotta wear them together. I know. Uh, what else? Oh. Of course, her hats. Everything Scarlet wears, honestly. Her suspenders. So she pulls off suspenders well. Um, mm-hmm. Tommy's pink midi skirt when they're, like, talking about whatever, uh, Gagyong stealing Scarlet. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then her, uh, Scarlet's striped shirt and scarf and shiny skirt. It's a very interesting look. Yeah, interesting pairing. Yeah, because, well, her, like, striped shirt is, like, one Cut side off, yeah. off the shoulder, and then her scarf is, like, super long mm-hmm. and big, and then... And then I, she's wearing, like, a sequined skirt, or, yeah. like, shiny, and then she's wearing tennis shoes. Uh-huh, and then a hat, right? Uh-huh. I think she's wearing a hat. I don't know. Yeah, it's a lot. But I like it. <laughs> yeah, she wears these interesting pairings very well, I mm-hmm. Um, I also really liked Guy Young's sunglasses that she was wearing at the track. Oh, yeah. They I like really those, too. Cool. Yeah. It was an interesting shape and, like, coloring, shading. Mm-hmm. But, like, you basically named everything I liked. Yeah. On the same page here. I don't think I mentioned this last week, but I wrote it down, but it kind of, like, after that artist was, like, a dick to Ellie, Uh have you noticed that she's been dressing, Uh like, more professionally now? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, don't let the man get you down. But also, you look great, so. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Conflicting. Yeah. Yep. Um, I love you moments. I love you. I love you. I will always love you. I love you. Do you want to go first? Mm, let me see. What's a good I love you moment? Your prediction. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay, yeah, you're welcome. I mean, it gave me chills. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, other than that... I thought it was sweet when Ga Young like showed up to the track and held her husband's hand. And oh yeah, just like nonchalant about it. Mm-hmm. Like she just decided, like I'm gonna try this. Yeah, I'm. I thought it was like a cute moment, but then like later he was like, "Get rid of all the photos." Delete. Like, oh shit. Okay. Yeah, their relationship is so confusing. And also because like there's moments where he tries to like make almost an effort. put the moves on her, and yeah, put in the effort and help and like be like a loving, supportive husband. Very confusing. Yeah. I, um, I liked when they held hands in the car. Uh, yeah. Morgan and mm-hmm. Tommy, when he's, like, half asleep. Mm-hmm. Um, and I mean, the end. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was exciting. Because it back to bed. <laughs> yeah. Most likely. Um, but yeah. I also keep thinking about my prediction, and I kind of mm-hmm. just want to binge the series just so I can figure out. Don't do it. I know. <laughs> We, may, we might see something in the next two apps. So. That's true. Ah, oh, I'm excited. Um, but yeah, what else? I guess I do like um, Scarlet and the actor. Mm-hmm. I like that storyline a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to see like where it's gonna go. Yeah, how that will progress. And like, I'm excited to see Scarlet keep watching the drama mm-hmm. and that guy have like a different character and stuff. So. Also, I thought it was, like, really nice of her, even though it was, like, really awkward to be like, you don't have a manager, like, I'll yeah. help you out. I'm, like, intimidating, so. I kind of feel like she. Manager? I know, that's crazy, to be on, like, a major, mm-hmm. what seems to be, like, a major drama. 
I mean, hmm. I don't know. But from my understanding, it kind of seems like he's on what they call, like, a daytime drama, mm. which is kind of like so an afternoon soap. soap. Opera. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With his wives, those are, like, all crazy. Yeah, it's real silly. Um... So, this is dumb, but I was, like, kind of getting into the storyline of the fake drama, Mm -hmm. and I don't know why, but I just assumed, like, the old lady from the beginning, like, she was just, like, reincarnated (laughs) into the, like, young Mm -hmm. person, but they're, like, she just had facial recognition, like, extreme plastic surgery to make her look young. Did you see? Scarlett said that. She, because they were, like... (sighs) well, that storyline isn't plausible. And she's like, none of these storylines are plausible. Like, <laughs> you have this, you had that old lady get plastic surgery so she could look like a young person. And I was like, oh, for some reason, I thought that old woman died and just like was reincarnated. Yeah, that makes into, a lot more sense. <laughs> than to have plastic surgery to make yourself look like a young that person. That much, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, oh shit, I don't, I was also very confused because I'm like, how did she get reincarnated so fast? <laughs> but, okay. She grew really quickly. <laughs> yeah. There was, like, um, a Star Trek Next Generation episode I saw. There was, like, this little orb of light that, mm-hmm. like, gets itself into the ship. And I texted Andrew about, like, how fucked up this was. But, like, it just, like, it saw humans. It's like, I want to know what humans are like and, like, what a human life mm-hmm. is like. And, like, growing up as a human or whatever. So it, like, goes into... What is her name? She's like the counselor, Counselor Troy. Mm-hmm. She's asleep. This fucking orb of light like goes under the covers and basically fucking rapes her. Oh my god! But like, not really. Like he like goes inside of her and he becomes her baby. This weird orb of light, and she like wakes up and it's like a big deal because it's like she's pregnant. Everyone's like, "What? With who?" And nobody like, knows. She's like, not nine, yet. Oh. She like she like felt something. Like she mm-hmm. got a test done or whatever, and they found out she's pregnant. And then, like, she's just growing rapidly. Like, within, like, hours, suddenly oh, she's, like, what you would be, like, five months pregnant. And then, like, she has the baby, like, that same day. And then, like, it's a big deal, and she's, like, in love with this baby. I forgot what she names oh. it. And then um Captain Picard goes to see the baby, and he's, like, I just wanted to see how the, the baby is doing and everything. And she turns around, and <laughs> there's a kid, like, like yay high, just staring. Oh, the kid is just, like, growing fucking rapidly. And then they find out that, like, he's going to die or whatever. Or, like, he's going to whatever the fuck. Because he uh-huh. was actually just this orb. And basically, like, he just wanted to know what it was like to be a human and grow mm-hmm. and whatever. Fucking weird. And I was, like, texting Andrew, and I was like, what the fuck? Kelsey Choi just got raped by an orb. <laughs> She's already going to have the kid. What is this? Oh, my God. It was intense. Yeah. There was an episode of Doctor Who. Not about the rape thing, but there's, like, I think an orb of light, and they, um, they kind of, instead of, like, impregnating humans, mm-hmm. they, like, take on, um, they basically, like, transition from, like, they do, like, a shape-shifting thing, mm-hmm. I think. Um, but they're kind of, like, an all-knowing thing, and they, like, go to different planets Yeah, and that's stuff. basically what this thing was. I guess that's maybe a common sci-fi. Maybe, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd never seen that before. And it was just like, oh, a ship. Oh, people. Yeah. Humans? What are you? <laughs> <laughs> so strange. I know. Uh... Um, but that was Star Trek Corner. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I haven't watched any new dramas, so. All right. Oh, I was, Andrew told me I should talk about the BTS movie. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, because he was like, oh, Jill could go with you, and you guys could have a special episode of the podcast. And I was like, well, the tickets are sold out. <laughs> um, But anyway, it was good. I mean. Where did you watch it at? Embassy. Mm. Which I was, like, actually very annoyed because on the day of, um, I was, like, I think I was looking for the runtime or something. But then I realized that it was showing at Draft House. And, like, I bought the tickets, like, a month ago. Mm-hmm. And I don't think Draft House, like, had that listed yeah. yet. And I was, like, well, I would have watched that Draft House had I known. Mm-hmm. But it was actually really nice at Embassy because – I sat in the last row, and you know how the seats, like, recline yeah. and stuff? So I was actually, like, really cozy, and I really like how they have, like, you can't see the people beneath you. Mm-hmm. So it was actually very ideal. Cool. And I had, like, a little Caitlyn date night to myself, because I, like, 
got dinner by myself, and I just... Nice. I was just living my best life, basically. You were being Tommy. I was being Tommy, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But then I went home to Alex, and that was nice, too. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but yeah, it was good. Uh, I don't regret buying the ticket, Mm -hmm. um, but I also feel like they might just, like, put it on Amazon or something, because I think they've done that with their previous Mm. things, Uh and I thought they were going to show more of the concert but fucking bts and all of their schemes so basically they're like so the movie was like half concert movie half documentary Uh um and then they're like if you want to see more of the documentary Mm -hmm. just an actual documentary like they're going to release it as a series which i realized they had done before on like their previous Mm -hmm. tour like they do like seven episodes or something like that um, that, like, goes, I think, to, like, each, like, chunk. Like, they'll do, like, the North America uh-huh. and then, like, whatever. But I was, like, it is very inspiring because you see these dudes, like, mm-hmm. work so hard on, like, writing their own songs and, like, touring and mm-hmm. practicing and dancing. And, like, you know, on tour, like, they get sick and they get hurt and, yeah. like, how they have to deal with that. And I was like, wow. And it made me really want to, like, practice my bass more. Because I'm like, <laughs> I c- we could do this. Yeah. <laughs> but then I got home and I went to sleep. So. <laughs> I understand. I, actually, no. I got home and I watched episode eight of the drama. Oh, okay. And then I went to sleep. Okay. Understandable. You have to do other work. Yeah. But I was like. It's so yeah. hard. I know. But. Yeah. They seem like good boys. And That's it makes good. me sad when they cry. Oh. <laughs> Because, like, they, I think they take it, like, so personally, uh-huh. and, like, they're, I mean, this is, like, their dream or whatever, yeah. and so, like, when they, like, mess up, like, they take it hard, and, like, one of the boys, I felt bad, because I think he had, like, strep or something, I don't know, like, he was sick, and he couldn't sing, and he was, like, <laughs> one of the main singers, so he, he normally has, like, a really low voice, uh-huh. so he could sing the low parts, but he can also, like, sing high parts, and, like, he couldn't sing, so he, like, did the thing where he would, like, hold, hold the mm-hmm, mic out, and, like, mm-hmm. everyone was singing along for him and stuff, but at the end, like, he felt really bad, and so he started crying, and I was like, I don't cry, it's okay, oh, <laughs> like, gosh. and all of, like, the guys were kind of, like, teasing him uh-huh. for crying, they're like, oh, our baby, like, don't, don't <laughs> cry, it's fine, but I'm like, man, they... Part of me is, like, don't take it so seriously. Like, uh-huh. it's fine. But then also it's, like, well, they probably got so big because they take it so seriously. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And We're I would so probably hard. cry, too, because mm-hmm. I cry over everything, so. Yeah. I cry no one hears me. <laughs> <laughs> still here crying. <laughs> I, on that, on that note. <laughs> yeah, find us online. <laughs> Email us at okdramapodcast at gmail.com. Tell us what makes you cry. <laughs> on, on Twitter, at OKDramaPod. Okay um, Instagram, OKDramaPodcast. Okay and on Facebook, OKDramaPodcast. Okay <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. And then if you have any, like, um, questions or comments or, like, things that you want us to include in the next episode, your well, I'm sure maybe you've already watched the whole drama. So don't give us spoilers, but just, like, little tidbits. Mm-hmm. Basically, like, the stuff we've already talked about. Give us your thoughts and... Mm-hmm. Or if you have any questions, like, mm-hmm. what you would like to know our opinion mm-hmm. from. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I guess that's it. Yeah. We will talk to you all next week. Bye. Bye. Okay, drama! Bye.